I'll read today's passage. Once more, I, today I will read today's passage. Today's passage is Luke 6, verses 27 through 38. Once again, Luke 6, 27 through 38. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone asks or takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Please allow me to pray. Dear wonderful Heavenly Father, we know that you love each and every one of us and that you gave your only Son for each and every one of us because you love us so much and that those who belong or believe in Jesus Christ, anyone who believes in Jesus Christ, and that he died in the, on the cross, and that he was raised on the third day, and that he is uh, alive today as well, those who believe in that will have true life. We thank you for this. Dear Holy Spirit, we listen to your words. Please open our hearts and allow us to be um, honest before you. Allow the Holy Spirit to work freely and abundantly in our lives. This is what we ask of you, and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. There was just a wonderful song for the offertory. It was it really uh, talked about Christ's heart, and it was wonderful to hear the song. In this world, if everyone could just suddenly have Christ's heart, then our families and societies and our world would be just peaceful instantly for that moment. Today's topic is talking about Christ's heart and having that in our hearts. 
there was once a place that uh, there was a uh, had two people who had said to have no enemies, and they interviewed these two people, and they were asked, "How did you become a person who has no enemies?" And the first person replied by saying, "Well, I." I killed all of my enemies. Anytime I see them, I kill them. So that's why I don't have any enemies. That's why I am said to have no enemies. I killed them all. And the other person、uh, responded by saying, "Well, anytime I met a mem- enemy, I became friends with them. So that's why I have no enemies." Well, what kind of、uh, type of person would you like to be around? <laughs> Which kind of person would you like to become? Of course, I think the the latter person is what I would prefer. In today's passage, it's talking about、uh, this topic and how Jesus、uh, looks at it, and how you can become a person with no enemies. That's today's topic. If you read today's passage, you can see how Jesus has extremely high morals, and some people may think this is just impossible. This is just how could you live up to such morals? And that's true. It is impossible, but as I always say, Jesus Christ has this high morals. But the reason why he's telling it is, isn't that we have to live up to those, and that we should be just utter、uh, distress because we can't do it, but rather that Jesus tells us these high morals, so that we humans. If we really understand God's love and are filled with the Holy Spirit, we can actually reach that level. We can grow up to be that have that level of morals. We can be a come of work, a work of God that attains such level of high morality. That's why this high level of、uh, morals is something that isn't something that you should be just、uh, distressed about that you can't、uh, achieve. Or that you should feel bad because you're a Christian, but you're not able to be such a moral person. We just have to see how far we can、uh, go and grow to achieve this goal in our lives. We, you know, each person can、uh, do their best to、uh, grow up in their morality, in a sense. Please think of it in that way. Looking at、uh, verse twenty-seven, it says, "Please love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you." Bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. Here, Jesus is、uh, saying that, in respect to、uh, enemies, you're supposed to take on four stances. What you're supposed to do for your enemies, in other words. So, what? Do, how do you react to your enemies? Do you cross,、uh, run them over? <laughs> well, no, that's not what Jesus says. He says to love them. What do you do with people who hate you? Do you just ignore them, or just just not even bother with them? Well, Jesus says to do good for them. What do you do for those who curse you? What do you do? Do you just curse them back? Do you just、uh, curse them out? Well, no.、Uh, Jesus、uh, encourages us to pray for them, and to curse means to like say something bad, and so do you. Uh, curse them back. Well, Jesus says not to do that, but to actually、um, pray for them or encourage them or do a, send them a good word back in response. And what do you do to someone who uh, like uh, slaps you or hurts you? Do you just ignore them, or do you just try and get back at them? Jesus encourages us to、um, pray for them, and this is to pray for their happiness and. I pray that they will be、uh, happy. What do you think about this? What Jesus is saying here can be simplified into one、um, aspect. If some、uh, something is done to you from an enemy, you are not to respond in a negative manner. We have、uh, many emotions that we can express. We can express joy and anger, and love and sadness. For example, for joy, there's a positive aspect and also a negative aspect. There's these two aspects for joy. You can be proactive with joy or destructive as well. 
Jesus says to be joyful, but not to have negative source of joy. What I'm saying is that if you uh, have joy over somebody's success, that's a good thing. But if you're having joy over someone's uh, um, failure, then that's not a good thing. The same with anger. If you look at bad things that are happening in society and you're angry about it, then that's, that's a good aspect of anger. But if you are harmed, your feelings are hurt and you're just upset about uh, things and you're angry about it, that's uh, not a good aspect of anger. It's a bad aspect. Same for sadness. If you are with someone who is sad and you're um, helping them through their sadness, then that's a, that's a good thing. However, if you are just looking at yourself and being sad for yourself, that's a bad aspect of sadness. And same is for um, joy or enjoyment. If you are building up someone else and, and, and joyful with them, that's a good thing. But if you're just doing something for your joyful for your own desires, then that's not a good aspect of being joyful. Jesus was uh, saying this and just uh, clarifying that he wants us to get rid of any negative aspect of our emotions. Some people may say the following. They may say, well, I understand what you're saying, and there's these um, plus and minus uh, aspects of everything, but that's what a human is. You know, it's, uh, humans are supposed to show these both sides of their emotions. It's not good to just totally get rid of this negative aspect of your emotions because then you won't be a true human. So some people might say that. However, is that really true? Is that really true? Really? Is that okay to, that if we really got rid of our negative emotions, would that really be better? In America, there's a um, place uh, known as the NASA, the Astronaut uh, Center, and they uh, send astronauts into the, uh, space. Astronauts uh, have to have very uh, uh, severe training in order to become a true astronaut. It takes about two years uh, to prepare to go into space. They have uh, training two hours a day. And it's uh, short, but it's very hard training. If they did this seven or eight hours a day, it would be too much. So they have two hours that's very intense. They do this for two years. So it's about... Um, uh, like 14,000 hours of training. when And the training is to be able to deal with problems when they occur. So, for example, if the space shuttle is uh, sent into space and the engine falls apart, you have to know how to fix it. If you don't fix it, you can't come back to the Earth. Or, for example, if you're doing work out in space and the arm piece um, breaks, you have to know how to fix that as well. Or if the heat-resistant tile comes off, you have to know how to fix that too. So basically, what happened? You have to know what to do when problems occur. In other words, you won't be able. Other ways, you won't be able to come back to the earth. So they have this uh, intense training, uh, two hours a day. It's very, very stressful, and they have this, you know, total of a thousand four hundred uh, hours. And it's what seems to be that after they. Uh, hit the 1,000 hour mark of training that people express their true character and uh, people who get very angry or upset tr actually get upset or get angry or get irritable and then they kind of snap out at other people and they start arguing at each other this is uh, the negative aspect of their emotion that generally happens at this time there is a person observing the training, and if he notices uh, this happening, he will ask those type of people to leave the training, and they won't become astronauts. If you think about it, this is really true, because in the rocket, it's a very small area, and you have to be with people in a very confined area. So if you are around people who get very angry, then that's a um, difficult situation because people watching from Earth would be really <laughs> upset if they saw you just angry, getting angry in space. So that's why in training, they have to get rid of these people who have very uh, negative emotions. That's how they can... Uh, they do the training, and only those who can control their negative as uh, emotions get to become astronauts. Have you noticed what kind of people become astronauts? You have probably noticed uh, the Japanese people who have become astronauts. 
these are people you may already know. I will tell some examples. The first one is um, Mori Mamoru san. Next one was a woman, Mukai Chika Chiaki san. Next one's Waka, Wakata Koichi, and then Noguta Koichi san and uh, Hoshide uh, san as well. There were others. And there's some people who may have uh, gone to listen to them speak or seen them on TV as well. But those people, are are they very unattractive? No, actually they are very attractive in the sense that they are very uh, calm and refined people. And this doesn't mean that if you get rid of negative uh, emotions that they're going to be a, a dead type person, that they'll actually be quite um, c kind and very nice. One person says, I don't want to become an astronaut, so this doesn't apply to me. <laughs> well, but actually, you are actually an astronaut in a sense. Because we are all on the spaceship planet Earth, and we're going around the globe. Do you know the speed that the planet moves, the Earth moves? It's 107,280 kilometers. Anyone come that speed today to the church? <laughs> That's a very fast speed going around the Earth. That's the speed we're going, actually, and we're all on the same spaceship here. So we should be like the true astronauts and re withhold our negative emotions and work together so that we can uh, have a good life here together. Jesus says that we are to get rid of our negative uh, emotions. The next... Um, point I'd like to talk about is the golden rule. It's in uh, verse 31. It says, do to others as you would have them do to you. In Matthew, uh, Jesus says the same thing. And it says uh, the following after this part, it says, this is the law and the prophets. What this means is that in the Old Testament, there is a lot of teachings, but if they were all summarized into one part, it would be actually applied to this part. It would be that a do to others as you would like to have done to yourself. That's what can be said of the Old Testament uh, in one one word, and this applies to human relationships as being the golden rule. If you just do this, then you won't have trouble with um, problems with your relationships, and you will truly be a person with no enemies. Regardless of how someone approaches you with what kind of attitude they may have or whatever they say to you, you are, can still do good back to them. Regardless of what negative thing uh, or destructive thing someone tries to do uh, to you, you can always take a positive response. The result of that is in verse uh, 35, and it says... Um, Oh, sorry, it's uh, later on in that you will be um, have a repayment. If you follow this golden rule, then you will receive a good a payment. In Matthew, uh, it's repeated several times. It says, then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So regardless of how someone approaches you or treats you, you can still do good back to them. And in secrets, God is watching to see how we actually respond to these types of people. And he does uh, prepare an, a, a reward for us if we're able to respond in a positive manner. So there's nothing you do positively that uh, will be in waste, done in waste because God sees everything. In Japan, in the Taisho era, there was a person who was a, a Christian by the name of Jukichi Yagi, and he died at a young age. Actually, he began uh, was baptized and had gained faith at twenty age twenty one, and uh, died of tuberculosis at twenty nine. In his short life, he uh, made many, many uh, wrote many poems, and the poems were uh, filled of glory and grace to God. For example, he wrote Autumn Eyes and Poor Faith in Call Out to God. In his last year of life, he was struggling with tuberculosis and he had to have a complete bed rest and then he died. In this uh, f t um, time of complete bed rest, he came up with many, many uh, great poems and I'd like to share one of them with you today. It's in the, your bulletin and I'll be reading the English translation. 
since it's just a short life. Make, oh, sorry, uh, he is, uh, this is readiness as he is uh, dying in bed. The poem reads, since it's just a short life, make your best effort to have a beautiful heart. The source of all pain is loss of the intention to unconditionally and unlimitedly forgive others. I want to forgive as God does. If I warm up the hatred thrown at me by others in my chest and it becomes like a flower, then I want to give it to God. If you think of life as not being long, you will start to make a wholehearted effort to believe in God and love people. If you can have a heart like this, then the Bible says, then, then you will become a child of God uh, and that you will be um, blessed. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be children of God. You, if you create peace, you will be a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. <laughs> In today's um, passage, the last part we'll look at right now, and it's looking at having uh, to use a forgiveness and love and mercy scale. Let's look at verse 37 again. It says, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. What this means is that if you say the opposite, if you judge, you will be judged. If you condemn, you will be condemned. If you don't forgive, then you won't be forgiven. If you, if you don't give, then you won't be given to. That's what it means. So God doesn't want us to judge others and condemn others. And he wants us to give, forgive, and to get, and forgive, and to give as well. If we do this, then we, God will uh, grant uh, work in our lives. If we do so, God's scale is a huge scale, and so it's if we turn our scales to His, it will uh, be in our advantage. Um, some persons said that there was two kinds of scales. Um, some people think that there's a scale for uh, judgment, and there's some people think of it as a scale for forgiveness. I want to give one example. For example, if you go to a wedding reception party for someone, and there's a lot of uh, food out there, and there's a lot of uh, drinks as well, maybe there's wine and beer and Japanese sake, and uh, also juice for and tea for those who don't like alcohol, then you would be able to choose what you want to put in your cup, and you can uh, choose what you drink. In most cases, the a husband and uh, the bride, bride and groom's parents would um, usually c come around to meet all the guests and give um, poor drinks for those who are already um, drinking something. That's just kind of the Japanese custom for what they would do at a wedding reception. Maybe you've had this happen to you before. At those times, if you have juice in your cup to start with, like, for example, the orange juice, then when the people come around to pour you another drink, they will notice that you have orange juice, and they will give you more the orange juice. They won't give you beer in your cup. They will give you what you already have. So, for example, you will only get more of what you already have to start with. That's what you would do for somebody else, right? You wouldn't give to um, some, they wouldn't pour tea into beer, would you? You would give someone who has beer more beer, or if you Japanese sake, more sake. You would just um, give more of what you already have, and that's what, what's saying here about God. If we have uh, judgment in our hearts, God will give us judgment. He says, if you like judgment, I'll give you more judgment then. But if we have a forgiveness in our hearts, then uh, God will think, oh, you like forgiveness, so I'll give you more of that. In our hearts, God will look at that and give us more of what we already have. 
and God's scale is huge compared to ours, and He'll give us much more than what we already have. If we don't have a heart of forgiveness, then God will withhold that from us as well. And He'll just, uh, we need to, we need to uh, empty us, empty our hearts out to start with. God will uh, fill us with what we have in our hearts. So our uh, uh, um, summary of today's message is verse 36, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Have a heart that's filled with joy and forgiveness. Please have that heart as you go forward this week. Now I'll pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for being with us today as well. We know that in our hearts, Lord, we have uh, um, unclean or unpure thoughts. But we know that, God, you will come and you will purify us. And we thank you for this. Dear Lord, we, please allow us to have a heart full of joy and forgiveness in this coming week. Allow us to be able to truly forgive others and to be able to be joyful with others. In this week, Lord, please allow us to have a heart of Christ. Please guide us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we'll have a time of prayer and silence. And I'll pray once more. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, each and every person, in this coming week and forevermore. Amen. Today we have communion, and we will be uh, delivering it to you where you're sitting today. So please just wait, and we'll, uh, we will be serving it to you. People who believe in Jesus Christ are welcome to take this. We're just getting volunteers to help out now. We're just seeing if we have enough people. And Ono-san will be helping as well. As we're passing this out, we would like to make some announcements. Please refer to the screen in front. This is information about the parking lot. Right now on Sundays, in the area around here, we have uh, parking lots that uh, can accommodate about uh, 20 cars, and there's seven locations. The closest one is the one that right in front of the church, church. But actually, that spot is one where we would like to have people park who are coming for the first time or people who are handicapped or elderly people. We would like to have that par uh, parking space just uh, for those type of people. Anyone who is uh, able to and younger, uh, we encourage you to please park at a farther location. We will show you the locations on the screen. This is the closest one. It's near the entrance of the church. <laughs> now we'll be turning and going down the road here to the um, shrine. We'll go shrine. We'll just fly by here. Stop. Here, on the way to past the shrine, there's a place to go to the right. You can park here, and then we'll keep going. And we'll go to this larger road here. We'll go here to turn left and stop here. <laughs> Here, there is a parking lot also for the uh, church that about 20 cars can park at. We'll keep going. We'll go back and keep going through the neighborhoods. And here, there's another parking lot. 
This is where there is a preschool, where the, and on Sunday only we're able to park here, so you can park there as well. It's a little far, but we encourage you to use this one as well. We hope that uh, for your health, you will decide to park here and walk to church. <laughs> and now we'll go to the next locations. Now we'll start here again from the parking lot in front of the church. And we will go out here. And we'll still go the same way and fly past the shrine. <laughs> and, we'll, and here we will turn right. And we'll go back in this way. And here, in the large, in the place in the back is for other people to park. But we have three uh, lines here where you can park, and you can use this on days other than Sunday as well. There are also some other um, places near the Soba place, and uh, as well, you're welcome to park there too. So we encourage you to please not park in the closest uh, location and allow that to be places for people who are handicapped or uh, have um, disabilities to park there instead. Do you have your communion? Uh, Thanks. And dear Jesus, thank you so much again for the uh, grace that you've provided us. Dear Lord, we really remember that this um, wine or juice is to remind us of your blood on the cross and that each drop of it is what has purified our sins and given us forgiveness. We thank you for this. We remember that the bread is for your representing your body and it is uh, your uh, body and that on the third uh, day you have were resurrected and this morning lord we we thank you for again for this forgiveness and grace if anyone here who is uh, very tired physically or uh, psychologically lord we ask that in jesus um re resurrective uh, power that you will be healed we thank you and believe this in faith amen You can put your cups in the exit. There is a basket for them. That concludes today's worship service. Anything else? Anything else? No? OK. That concludes today's service. There is a tea in the room next over if you're interested. We'll see you again next week. That also concludes the English translation. Thank you very much for listening. Be blessed. We'll see you next Sunday.